lovely viewers welcome back to ghana tv it's your girl chasey with today's segment like share comment subscribe and press the notification button to get more trending updates from us judge chases jb jb skiller Accra High Court has issued a stern warning to seven member jury hearing the case of Daniel Asie, aka Sexy Don Don, who is prime suspect in the murder of JB Dampa, the late the late member of Parliament. After some of them after some of them failed to show up for the trial yesterday, we all know JB Dampa's death issue is still going on. They've not found who is the killer, or they've not found out who really killed him. People have come out, there are people who are there are people government or the court is suspecting to have killed him. So they are going through procedures. Some were supposed to show up for the case, but people didn't come. Some didn't show up. So the court the court is addressing it. The court proceeded over over by Justice Lydia Osei Mafo was clearly not impressed by the absence of some of the jurors who she said have constantly refused to appear in the trial that have not been empaneled so the judge believes strongly that though the case has not been settled she doesn't understand why some of the members are not showing up or some people are supposed to take the case are not showing up like share and comment the prosecution aid and last witness justice augustus Nkuma, was expected to continue his evidence in chief yesterday but the case has been adjourned because three of the jurors were absent. The judge was supposed to go through with the proceedings, but yesterday three of the suspects didn't show up, which is causing which is causing the case to keep going forth and back. We all want to know who really killed this man so that the case would be dead and gone. Keep bringing in your comments. If you are new to the channel, kindly subscribe, press the notification button to get more training updates from me. The court was not pleased because the witness who was to continue his testimony. The court head, the court head is now a cadet at the police training, police training academy, and was only released, was only released so he could conclude testifying in the case. People, the court believes that the court believes that the main suspect is from the police academy. He was also supposed to be present, but didn't show up, and the court is not really happy. Justice Lady Osema Fu indicated that. The judges have asserted themselves a number of times in recent recent times due to claims governments didn't pay them after their allowance. So the people who were supposed to show up are claiming that because governments didn't pay them their salary or their allowance, they can't even pour buy buy water for themselves or buy or pay their lawyer fare. So there's no need for them to come. If governments pay their salaries or their allowance, they will show up to the court proceedings. I am told their conditions have been met about a month ago. They are not they are not owned and yet some of them have constantly refused to appear in the trials that have been that have been on panel. So the judge is also saying that she did some investigation about their allowances. Though it has been paid, she doesn't know why they are still saying government owes them. So she's questioning why are they not showing up? But the people are also saying she they've not been paid. So who is telling the truth, the, the judge or the suspects, those who have been suspected? Who is really telling us the truth? But yes, so the judge wants to end up with this case because we really want to know what really happened during the day he was murdered. The warning should go, the warning should go to them as from tomorrow. Any judge that will come to this court late or refuse to come to this court in case they have been empaneled would be sanctioned as rule spe speculated in Act 3.0, Justice Mafu 1. Justice Mafu has given a strong warning again that anybody who come late or anybody who will not show up will face serious, serious cases, will face serious consequences because she doesn't know why we are supposed to show up for court and you are not coming and you are making up with fringe excuses like allowances government this government that when you are not working i'm sure you are still surviving so why would you why would you come out to say that because government is not paying you are so you are not coming so she's issuing a strong warning to them that tomorrow if they don't show up any any decision she makes it's final whether you are the murderer you are not the murderer she is going to take several cases against you 
Daniel Daniel Asiedu is before the court on a charge of murder while James James Bones who had been charged with robbery. The court has already admitted the confession statement of Asiedu in which he admitted stabbing the late JB Dankwa multiple times during a struggle on the night he went to the late MP's house to rob. So Daniel Asiedu has come out to say that he indeed murdered the MP because he went there to steal. When he saw the MP, he panel, he he panicked. So there were some back and forth. They were struggling, which he used the little pocket knife he had and stabbed him. And stabbed the one Vincent has also come out to say he also went there to just to steal. He saw some television, some laptops, some phones. We are yet to really find out the real truth about this. Keep bringing in your comments, like and share. The administration is, is contained in a video recording during the interrogation of the accused as well as videos of reconstruction of crime scene in the late MP's house and was admitted by an, an, I, an, by an Accra High Court where the accused is standing trial for murder. So they have seen some footages which is showing that Asiedu, Daniel Asiedu is indeed the one who killed or stabbed the MP while the other party was not really shown but so they are yet to find out how true it is or is if Asiedu, Asiedu is really the person in the footage they are seeing though the court has come out with these footages how true is it are we really sure it's Asiedu Daniel Asiedu who is behind this main murder or is something the court is also bringing up keep bringing in your comments like and share he told the investigator that he did not he did not know the personality of the late MP prior to robbing him and only chose his shoe out of lost in the house because it was the only one that had lights turned on when he entered the house. So Daniel believes that he didn't really know the MP. He doesn't even know he was an MP or he did anything for the country. He just saw that it was an opportunity for him to steal. So he went through, he went through because when he saw the house, there was lights on and when he climbed up, one of the windows was open, which was a best option for him. So he slid into the open window and went through to take whatever he wanted. He indicated that the glass window leading to the late MP's room was not locked. So he slid it open and entered the room, sneaked himself behind a chair and went to the bedside bedside drawer where he picked two phones and just when he was about to leave the room the late MP woke up and turned off, turned off the tele television and spotted him he said that the late MP shouted T for T so Daniel believes that when he went to the house he didn't even know there was someone there when he was in the act of taking some things some things belonging to the late MP the late MP turned on the television and spotted him and the late MP started started screaming T4, T4, T so that people can come into his head but because of that he got scared he got panicked he got what he was like he was shocked that oh I'm coming to steal and yes there's someone in this house I thought the house was empty because why would you have this big house to yourself and windows are open there's like free entry for everyone to come in so he was shocked when he saw the late MP so he struggled with the late MP because he didn't know why the late MP was shouting T4 because he felt he was not a thief. It was his option to also become rich, sell some of the goods and get some small money to feed himself. But he didn't know that this will cause a huge mistake of his life. He said the happy held held his shirt around the neck firmly and he struggled with the MP. It was during the struggle that he said he said he stabbed he stabbed he stabbed the late MP with a jack knife which weakened him and he sat on the floor beside the bed and could not scream for help so daniel believes daniel believes that it was through this difficulties or this struggle that the mp wasn't able to move because a small jacket knife he had he used it on the mp like multiple times he didn't know what to do because he didn't want people to come out of the house to catch him or to beat him because he's known to be an mp of the area so they struggled a bit where the mp held him family because the mp was also trying to wonder why would you come to my house and steal there are plenty houses on the blocks why did you choose my house so they were they were struggling each other both of them were struggling so so daniel took the opportunity to stab the mp several times which caused the mp to be weakened and he left him by the bedside 
to run away because at the end of the day when the police come or whoever the MP was calling help help someone might have heard him struggling or heard him screaming so they could have caught him so he decided to leave the house leave the premises so that no one would find him but not knowing there were cameras in the empty's house we captured everything though his face his face didn't really pop out well but he was boldly to admit that yes he was the one so the court is still yet to find out indeed if he has a suspect or there are other people contributing or it was a planned thing they did to execute the MP from power. Keep bringing in your comments, like and share. It's your girl again. I'm out.